Samba MOTR just came out and it can track multiple objects under occlusion. Let's take a look at how well it tracks objects. If you're new to my channel, I teach robotics and AI, so subscribe to learn more. So this right here is a Samba model. The MOTR stands for multi-object tracking. So whether you're looking to track people dancing or birds flying in the air or basketball players, this is a model for you, especially if you're dealing with occlusions. So let's take a look at kind of the architecture of this. So one thing that's very unique to this is that it has memory. So it actually predicts how the different objects are moving relative to each other and also as a function of time. So it's kind of similar to the like long short-term memory type of architectures as a transformer base. So it's very interesting. You can look at this architecture in more detail here if you want to, but let's go ahead and take a look at some of the examples. So here are some examples of people dancing. So <laughs> notice that you know it does very well with tracking. You see the people passing behind each other. It does very well. Uh, here's a few more examples right here. This one's another group of people. You can see there's people in the back passing back and forth. They're also moving really fast too, all dressed the same, and it can still detect the different people. Very impressive. Here's a few more. This is with uh, birds flying. So let's take a look at this one here. So you see the two birds right here, the zero and two. Sometimes it can get confused, but <laughs> even I'm getting kind of confused which one is which, but you could kind of tell which one based on the size a little bit. I think one was a little bit grayer, but you can see that it does pretty well here. Now here's a few more examples with sports. So we could take a look at this volleyball on here. You can see that here a lot of the players are overlapping. Uh, sometimes if you look close to the net on the left side, sometimes when they get too bunched up, uh, sometimes it tends to lose track for a little bit. You can see it's like flashing, right? So in those cases, I would say the best way to handle that is to apply some sort of filtering um, because it's just for a split second. So from a signal processing standpoint, it's kind of like a noise. So you could just go ahead and filter that out. Uh, but here you can see these are some more examples with basketball and football. Um, I can't zoom in, unfortunately, because I actually had to re-record this since I got some copyright strikes for this. So you're going to take a look at it from this point of view or go ahead and check it out on their website. But here you can see that in terms of basketball and football, it's doing pretty well too. Uh, just notice like this basketball one up here, for example, sometimes... Uh, it has the same situation where uh, for a few split seconds, it'll lose track for a little bit. But I would say overall, it's very impressive. Uh, I would say once the code comes out, I would recommend you guys to check it out and play with it and see how it works for your application. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.